Good morning, still morning. Um, I'm Caleb Friend. Uh, I just joined the uh, Children's National uh, Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Department about seven months ago. Came from uh, Oakland, California, so it's a pleasure being here. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, a more difficult subject in some ways. Um, what is normal in a child in terms of their lower extremity development and appearance? So some background, as you know, uh, pediatric orthopedic practices see a very high volume of patients where there's concern about lower extremity alignment. Actually very few of these patients have pathologic conditions. Um, being able to efficiently locate the cause, anatomic cause of the observed deformity helps determine whether a condition is likely to be pathologic and whether a visit to the orthopedic subspecialist is indicated. This leaves appointment slots open for patients who are uh, in greatest need for specialty care. You all know that uh, there's a great um, push from the community to get these patients in to see uh, the orthopedic specialist in a timely fashion. We're trying our very best to do the, this and we hope to partner with you to um, improve those, decrease those wait times. Let me give you a little bit of background um, uh, about me though. My mother's a pediatrician, and um, so I know very well that many parents uh, can simply not be reassured. And <laughs> there are uh, many resources out there that perhaps you're not aware of. Um, and in addition to that, I'd like to be able to give you some guidelines and um, uh, for when a referral is, is most necessary um, and when uh, watchful waiting is more appropriate. Uh, these are some online resources. Don't write these down. Um, just email me. I will send you resources. There's printouts that you can hand out to patients. Um, sometimes that's all helpful. Okay, so classically we're taught in pediatric orthopedics that if you wait long enough you will see the child naturally unfold in time. And there are anticipated deformities, deformities in quotes, um, in, of the normal of the lower extremity um, that will res will occur at certain times and resolve in a uh, known timeline. Planes of deformity, basics on that is coronal plane is the frontal view, sagittal plane is the side view, the axial plane is what you see if you were mounted on the ceiling looking down. Most of what uh, patients come in for is coronal plane and axial deformities. Coronal plane deformity example would be bow legs or knock knees, axial plane deformities in towing and out towing. Anticipated normal development in the coronal plane is that when a child is first ambulatory they are bow legged. That tends to uh, change to being knock kneed and then the adult profile is more of a neutral to slight knock kneed appearance. Axial plane, infants typically have external rotation uh, through their hips. Um, you expect out towing at that point. That tends to resolve and by the time they're uh, ambulatory, the typical profile is slightly in -toed. You develop a normal profile of being um, feet facing forward uh, to slightly externally rotated. There is huge variation in all of this. And a variant of normal doesn't equate with disease. This is very challenging to explain to parents. They're very concerned about a lot of these alignment issues that, issues that are benign. So I'm gonna do my best to give you some guidelines. You can think about these deformities by age, by patient age, and by the deformity itself and try to place these into categories so you can figure out what, where is this coming from? Does this tend to be abnormal or is it something that is a variation of normal that we see? Even if it's not average, this is still okay and not something that you need to worry about. The newborn will exhibit uh, packaging deformities. That is not to say uh, dysplasia of the hips and metatarsis adductus necessarily, but um, from positioning in utero and from fetal development, we accept, expect to see genu varum. We expect to see physiologic bow leg. We occasionally see a curved foot, metatarsis adductus. 
we tend to see internal tibial torsion or rotation. We may not see that initially because of the external rotation contracture of the hip. When that resolves, you then see the internal tibial torsion that was there the whole time. Toddler age to pre-adolescent, Boeing should start to resolve prior to or around age two years. Often it's replaced by appearance of knock knees. This may be due to a true frontal plane deformity, um, or it could be related to a torsional deformity, and I'll explain a little bit more of that later. Maximum valgus angulation occurs around three years of age, although there's a little bit of variation in that as well. Important thing to note that rotational variations or deformities remodel little, little after age eight. So if you see a nine-year-old who intos, Parents should know that this is unlikely to improve significantly over time. In the adolescent and adult, again, wide variation is noted. The average coronal alignment, standing frontal alignment, is straight legs to very slight valgus. It's about seven degrees on average. The average tibial torsion is 15 degrees external. Frequently, that slight internal rotation at the hip will sort of nullify the external rotation at the through the tibias and the feet will look straight. Average femoral antiversion, that's the internal rotation at the hip, is zero to 15 degrees. How do we go about evaluating this in a child? The first thing I do is I have them undressed from really the mid-thigh down, prefer preferably, and I have them walk. We look at foot progression angle, and that's what the foot would look like in a, making a footprint. Then I look at, actually skip down to the bottom, foot appearance. I have the child on the mother's lap or the father's lap, look at the, pick the foot up and see is it curved or straight. I look at the, I turn the patient over prone on the exam table. We look at a five foot angle. That's the angle made by the long axis of the thigh compared with the foot and I will show you a picture of that. Then I rotate the uh, hips in and outward, inward and outward to determine if there is a rotation bias, meaning a, a tendency to rotate more in than out. And that will help me decide where the in-towing or the out-towing is coming from. This is a picture of a uh, patient prone. The knee is flexed at 90 degrees. The patella is pointed downward. The angle made between the thigh and the foot here as measured is a 40 degrees, so that, that's it's inward. 40 degrees of inward rotation. That's thought to be, based on this exam, due to tibial torsion. So if you see an intower, the causes are typically in the foot, if it's an infant, metatarsus adductus. In a toddler, it's typically the tibia, although not always, from internal tibial torsion. And in an older pre-adolescent or adolescent, it tends to be coming from the hip due to femoral or acetabular antiversion, basically hip antiversion, internal rotation through the hip. So internal tibial torsion, the average is actually five degrees internal at birth, although the, uh, there can be significant variation in this. This usually resolves by age four or five years. External rotation in adulthood is average 15 degrees external. 5% of adults have residual internal tibial torsion. So that's a huge range. Five degrees internal to about 20 to 25 degrees external is still within two standard deviations. Functional problems are not frequently observed. That isn't to say that you won't get parents who say, my child trips over their feet. They're three years old. That's true. <laughs> but when a child reaches early adolescence, in adulthood, intoing is frequently not a functional problem, rather a cosmetic one. This is sometimes the hardest thing to conv convince parents that, th that this is in fact normal. Femoral antiversion. At birth, it's approximately 40 degrees. It's very significant. We don't see that for the most part initially because of that external rotation contractor through the hip because of in, in utero positioning. By age eight years, remember there's not a lot of rotational remodeling that occurs after eight. So you typically 
have an adult appearance less than 15 degrees of antiversion. You can have more than that, that is also still, typically still normal. From birth to age five, intoing can actually increase as deformities undergo summation. So you have a little bit of femoral antiversion, you have a little bit of internal tibial torsion, and then that foot progression angle looks very internally rotated because it's a product of summation. This femoral antiversion tends to improve and even resolve by age eight years. Again, not always. Um, if either internal tibial tor torsion or femoral antiversion are severe, the only way to fix that is an osteotomy. Unfortunately, there's no role for bracing or special shoe wear. This doesn't work. There's no role for physical therapy, as long as we're talking about a normal child. The indications for osteotomy are very narrow. Um, most of my colleagues state that they either will not operate on kids with uh, intoing, as long as they're functional. Um, the indications that I've heard have been an older adolescent who is a little bit developmentally slow, uh, who actually physically in the office is noted to trip over his own feet. Those have been the indications that I've heard. Outtoeing, causes of it in infancy, external rotation contracture at the hip, you've heard me say that a couple of times. Uh, posterior rotation or retroversion of the femur or acetabulum. If it's coming from the tibia when you do that thigh foot axis, um, external tibial torsion, it may be coming from the foot. Hyperpronation is that collapse of the, uh, not only of the arch, but the ankle sort of inward. That tends to roll the foot outward. So a flexible flat foot can do that. As long as the foot is flexible, it's okay. Flat foot is normal. The one thing that I really need to uh, emphasize, and it's a big take home point, is that if out towing is unilateral, especially in a pre-adolescent or ad adolescent, it may indicate hip pathology. If there's a limp, a associated limp, think slip capital femoral epiphysis, even if the child is not complaining of hip pain. This is usually, again, unilateral, a gradual to sudden onset, and there is accompanying knee, thigh, or hip pain. Kids can have slip capital femoral epiphysis with absolutely no hip pain whatsoever. They're complaining of only knee pain and they point to the anterior knee pit typically. The way to determine this is you get the child supine on the exam table, you flex the hip and the knee. If there's obligate external rotation, I'll do it on this side, as you do that, that's the suggestion of a slip capital femoral epiphysis. The way to then uh, further confirm that is to get the child prone and determine how much internal rotation they have in each hip. If they have decreased internal rotation on that same side, especially if it's accompanied with pain when you internally rotate gently, suspect slip capital femoral epiphysis, an AP and a frog leg lateral pelvis x-ray is required for that diagnosis. Okay, let's talk a little bit about coronal plane deformity. Genu verum. Um, physiologic bowing peaks at approx approximately age 18 months. The problem with that, of course, is that the child looks worse between age 12 months and 18 months. And parents say it's getting worse. As long as it starts improving by age two years, um, it, it's normal. And x-rays may be valuable for further evaluation after age two years. And they're typically not as valuable before that. There are some exceptions and I will go over that. Genu verum is often confused with internal tibial torsion. What you can do is cover up the lower extremity and the foot, the lower portion of the leg and the foot and take a look at the knees pointed forward. If it still looks bowed, then it's more likely to be either physiologic genu verum or result uh, I'm sorry, or Blount's disease. If you um, cover it up and the leg looks straight, it's probably due to the internal tibial torsion. What's happening is there is a normal anterior bow of the tibia. The child tends to kind of rest with the feet either faced forward or slightly out, just at a, as a resting position, not when they're uh, weight-bearing. 
if you roll the feet inward, that you're then taking that sagittal profile, that bow in the tibia, and you're turning it into coronal plane deformity. So you're actually making it look worse. Um, so when you evaluate this, make sure that you are looking at the patellas facing forward. If genuverum is not improving by age two years, consider a referral. Um, intracondylar distance of greater than seven centimeters, so with the ankles together, the space between the knees. Um, if it's greater than seven centimeters after age two and it's not improving, consider a referral in that case. I will detail some more uh, about Blount's disease. Um, so tibia vera, Blount's disease, if it's infantile, it's more often bilateral, but sometimes it is unilateral. In juvenile cases, it's more often unilateral. Juvenile cases can, uh, I just had uh, a young man present yesterday, 12 years old, with bowing in his uh, knees and knee pain. He had Osgood Schlatter's and he has Blount's disease. Um, abnormal bow legs, again, not resolved by age two. Significant unilateral involvement or asymmetry. Varus thrust, I'll explain that and severe short stature. A varus thrust is observed when a child is ambulating or weight-bearing. When they put weight on that leg, it falls into more varus. It sometimes looks like a limp. I can't do this because I don't have a limp flat for it, but it looks like that. I don't have the ligamentous laxity to throw, show a thrust, but I tried to sort of demonstrate what it looks like for you. Um, Think skeletal dysplasia if this is a very short stature individual with a coronal plane deformity as well. Radiographic appearance, um, the tibial metaphyseal diaphyseal angle uh, is important. I will I'll show that a slide of that and the appearance of the tibial plateau. This is the uh, tibio, I'm sorry, the metaphyseal diaphyseal angle on the right side. This is very important in determining whether this is likely to be blounts or physiologic. You can see the appearance of the uh, medial tibial metaphysis in this uh, blown up image. The, there is beaking of the metaphysis and the uh, epiphysis does not look like it is uh, symmetric compared to the lateral side. Genu valgum physiologic knock knees peaks around age three years. There's gradual resolution typically um, to a uh, adult profile of neutral to about seven degrees of valgus. Appearances are deceiving, so hip antiversion, external tibial torsion, ligamentous laxity, a flat foot, and copious soft tissue are bigger patients. Uh, can look like they have genu valgum and uh, be fooling you. Pathologic genu valgum is defined as a tibiofemoral angle greater than two standard deviations outside of the mean, and this varies as a function of age. Remember, it gets worse at age three and then tends to resolve gradually until age seven or eight. How to define this? It's sometimes difficult. I don't see a lot of excessive um, visits for genu valgum. I think if you're concerned and there's parental concern, the patient is older than seven, is not short stature, continue to refer those, please. Um, an important note about that referral, if there is severe genu valgum after age seven or eight, please refer prior to skeletal, skeletal maturity. There are surgical options that we have when a child is still growing that we no longer have when they stop growing. Brief note on the foot. Um, Multiple deformities, metatarsus adductus, club foot, and calcaneo valgus are seen in younger children. Metatarsus adductus is um, uh, identified by a curved lateral border of the foot. You want to see if it's passively correctable, so can you straighten the foot out manually? It is the most common cause of intoeing in children less than one year of age. This is different than a club foot which is a complex set of deformities involving cavus. So you see a plantar crease, varus, you see a medial crease, equinus, a tiptoe position, you have that posterior crease right above the heel, 
and adductus, which is that bean shape or kidney shape, kidney bean shaped foot. So it's a, and this tends to be more rigid, not passively correctable. The calcaneo valgus foot, we see this all the time. Um, uh, the foot can be dorsiflexed, so the dorsum of that foot lies on the anterior tibia. It can be very disconcerting for parents. Um, this is very different than a slipper shape or rocker bottom uh, foot that suggests um, a, another pathology such as uh, congenital vertical talus. The, there's two differences here I want you to want to point out. One in that calcaneo valgus foot in the upper images, the deformity you can see is occurring through the ankle joint. It is not occurring through the tibia. If you see bowing of the tibia, that is not normal. And we would like to see those patients in our offices. Um, the other uh, point is that the difference between this positional calcaneo valgus foot that will resolve with time and the rocker bottom foot is that typically the calcaneo valgus foot can be brought past 90 degrees neutral to a plantar flexion position, to a tiptoe position. The rocker bottom foot cannot. Very briefly on leg length discrepancy. There is no study that's ever conclusi conclusively proven causation, leg length discrepancy, producing back, hip, knee, or ankle pain, arthritis, or a sc structural scoliosis in an otherwise normal child. In gait studies, you do not see um, a limp until one limb reaches 5.5% difference compared to the contralateral limb. Obviously, this changes over time. If it's a set difference, a younger, shorter child will have a limp, and that may extinguish by the time they're skeletally mature. Um, it's clinically very difficult to identify and assess small differences, and small variations are, is, are normal in the population. Probably the best way clinically is not to get them prone and measure hip to malleolus, but rather to have them stand and measure the height of the iliac crest. If the child is uh, not yet standing, or uh, if you want further, to further demonstrate to the parents and yourself, you can do a Galeazzi sign, get them prone, flex the hips and knees up, make sure the heels are all the way um, bent as, as uh, I'm sorry, the heels are all the way back toward the buttock. Um, beware not to use this necessarily in a newborn because obviously Galeazzi sign can be a sign of hip pathology as well. Uh, briefly, surgical treatment for long bone deformity. We have a number of treatment options. Epiphysiodesis, guided growth, and osteotomy. This is an example of guided growth or epiphysiostasis. This is why uh, patients with genu valgum or genu verum, um, we would like to see them prior to skeletal maturity. We may have the opportunity to utilize a small plate uh, across one side of the growth plate and acts as a tether and allows the other side of the growth plate to then compensate and overgrow, correcting the deformity, which you see here in the radiographs. There are some patients who require osteotomy and if they are skeletally immature, certainly once a patient is skeletally mature and we're correcting alignment, the only way to do that is osteotomize. This can be done as a single event with a plate, uh, internal fixation, or it can be done gradually with the use of an external fixator. In summary, most alignment concerns are variations of normal development and will, will resolve without treatment. For genu verum, greater than age two years, not improving, unilateral and a varus thrust, Genu valgum, older than age seven or eight years, severe deformity, severe short stature. We like to see these patients prior to skeletal maturity. For outtoeing, this is not a frequent concern necessarily, but raise an eyebrow if the foot progression angle is greater than 60 degrees external, or if there's unilateral. In towing, Hard to tell you when to refer these. If it's straight up in towing, um, usually we do not need to see these patients for orthopedic consultation prior to age probably 12 because either it will resolve or it's a variation of normal. 
If you have more than five degrees of five foot axis internal after age eight, that would be a reasonable time to refer as well. There's no bracing physical therapy, anything that we can do to change this alignment in a otherwise normal child if it's coming from the tibia or the femur. Thank you.